Hey everyone, my name is Tegan and welcome back to Tandy Roads. Today is February 16th. I normally don't say when I film my videos because I upload them like months after, but today is February 16th. Yesterday, February 15th, I read a book called A Thousand Perfect Notes by C.G. Drews. And I read it in the space of a few hours. And then I wrote the review and uploaded it all in one night on like Goodreads, my blog, NetGalley, everything. So I'm doing this video now, just, just so it ties in with that timing. Oh, and I might be looking down a lot for this video because I'm reading some notes that I wrote. Because I'm still processing. So I'm going to start off by saying that I'm a little bit sad that I didn't have a physical copy of the book to hold because the cover is so pretty. I'll put a picture up, like, somewhere. And if you have two copies of the book, the front cover and the back cover, like, fit together and make a butterfly and it's very pretty. But I did get to read an advanced read copy in like ebook form that didn't have a cover on it at all. But I get to read it advanced from NetGalley in exchange for an honest review, so shout out to NetGalley. So this is the debut novel of C.G. Drews and she has a blog called Paper Fury. And if you've watched a few of my videos, you might know that I love and worship her a little bit. And that's not making this review bias at all. But I do love her as a human and what she creates in like the blogging world. It's the most unputdownable book I've read this year. It's an unputdownable word. Yeah, I read it in a few hours. It's full of thrill thrills. It's full of thrills and feels and it has this like beautiful musical heart that mine is like breaking for. So I'll start off by saying that the plot of this book is quite unlike a lot of contemporaries I've read recently. It's a very subtle plot. Not in the bad way, not at all, but it's subtle and it's fueled by the characters and their thoughts and feelings and desires, rather than just like events that have to occur to like push the story on. That means that all the characters are like very spectacularly developed and they're beautifully written. And I love the style in which this book is written because it's got a very conversational tone that like drags me into the story from like the very first page. And as someone who struggled to get into a lot of books recently, that really said a lot. But yeah, I read the first line of this book and I was instantly hooked and we know I loved it. One thing this book has is good family. And that's an interesting point because Beck himself he deserves so much more than the mother he has, but his sister Joey is a delight and he's such a loving and adoring old brother. I don't think we get enough like brother-sister relationships in YA, especially in contemporary, so this one like made my heart feel all warm and soft on the inside. And the only thing that keeps Beck going is looking out for Joey and protecting her. In contrast to Beck's monster mother, we have August's family, and they are an amazing family. They provide like, these moments of light and hope throughout this very dark story. And that's refreshing to read that's refreshing to read. That's refreshing to read since, you know, all the YA tropes of characters with like dead families and abusive parents. It's nice having a good family. Also side note, I'm very sorry if my camera is shaking because one of the tripod legs is on my bed. Because I have no space in my room, so it might be a little bit wobbly. <laughs> Another thing I love about this book is the friendship and the romance. It's a slow burn romance. Becky is this grumpy cinnamon roll and August is this ray of like sunshine and snark. They're paired together for a school project and Beck tries to be cold in distance because his mother's told him that, you know, friends are distraction to his music. But you know, August very easily breaks him down and then this like very pure friendship starts. The book has romance. A tiny little bit of romance it doesn't affect the story at all, but it's there and it's pure and it's beautiful. It's not insta love at all. It's a mutual love that's born out of like one of my favourite friendships I read in the book recently. And you don't really get any romance till like the last where was it? I was, I think I was like eighty percent into the book and then the like romance started and then it was gone and then it was back and my heart hurts. So yeah, the romance was hardly noticeable and it's very subtle, but it was still stunning and heartbreaking. Very heartbreaking. So the final point I'm going to talk about is food. 
I may have brushed on it briefly before, but I can't like stand at all. Like when in films or books the character's about to sit down for a meal and they're suddenly just like, you know, gotta go. It's like in Pretty Little Liars where the girls come down and they have this like full banquet out for breakfast and they like have a plate, they like pick up a thing, don't eat it and put it down, and then they leave because apparently this like potential murderer who's gonna reveal their biggest secrets is you know, more important than food. I disagree. But this book had so much food, and it was eaten, and I loved everything about it. So Beck's home diet is very much cereal and sandwiches, but August's food is like practically magical in comparison. It's so refreshing to read a book that cherishes food so much, especially since I know the author is a foodie. And I can just feel myself like salivating when I read in descriptions, because the descriptions were very delicious. In conclusion, this book made me feel so much. Lots of it hurt me to the core, but the rest of it was like so wonderfully real that I almost like made up for the pain, and I welcomed the pain. This is the book that makes me want to like live and breathe, which is slightly ironic because I spent a lot of it like holding my breath and just hurting for Beck. This may only be C.T. Drews' debut novel, but I can't wait to see where she goes with the rest of her books because I am already a lifelong fan. There's a robin on my fence. Oh, it's looking at me. And it's gone. <laughs> so to end this video, I'm gonna read you some quotes. He can't care about anything else, he can't. The music in his head is his pocket of relief, the only thing he passionately cares about. Cheerfulness is irritating, but it suits some people. Some people are born for sunlight and orange peel smells and running on the beach and wildflowers in their hair. Other people are born for non-existence. He wants to be invisible, an invisible boy with an invisible song in his head. Beck closes his eyes, forgets, zones out so far he reaches a place deep inside where his own music lies. Little notes clamouring to be free, his own notes, his own creations. His fingers tap a tattoo against his other clammy palm. If people cut him open, they'd never accuse him of being empty. But the notes inside him roil and break and press so hard against his skin they'll rip the seams and he'll burst and maybe they'll call him empty after all. Maybe no one can see his music, his own music, but him. So thank you for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it. In the description below I'll leave you links so you can pre-order this book, check it out on Goodreads, all that good stuff. Now there's a pigeon there. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it and you should definitely check out this book when it comes out. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.